John Kavakis here with another edition of My Take. And today we're going to take a look at the NB Center Collection's 1937 Studebaker Dictator Coupe. Uh, now, there's been a lot of discussion over this. I'll get into uh, what they've done with this model in just a little bit. But let me give you a little background on Studebaker. Studebaker had been around for quite some time, long before the beginning of the 20th century. They made wagons, conestogas, you, you've heard the name before. Uh, but they started making vehicles in 1902. They started with, of all things, an electric vehicle. Now, they had an electric vehicle because uh, there was some great concern that there were no gas stations in the cities. Uh, but they did have electricity in the city. So electric vehicles were popular right around the turn of the century. Of course, all that changed as they built infrastructure for the gas-powered vehicles. Uh, but the company did pretty well. Uh, going in the late 20s and early 30s, just when the Depression was starting, they made some questionable decisions. They bought Pierce Arrow. Uh, they came out with, in 1931-1933, they came out with a car called the Rockney. Uh, it was going to be a little bit of a lower-priced offering, but very similar styling to the Studebaker. They bought the White Truck Company. Um, and as the Depression gathered steam, uh, Studebaker was in trouble, and they kind of had to scrum, scramble. They, they sold the Pierce Arrow nameplate for a million dollars, pretty good price back then. Uh, they stopped making the Rockney in 1933, uh, and they sold off the stock in the white truck company. So by the mid-30s, 35, 36, they were doing pretty well. They only had two models in the lineup, the Dictator, which had a six-cylinder, and the Commander, which had an eight-cylinder. And a lot of people have said, why would anybody call their car a Dictator? Well, you know, that model had been in the lineup since 1927. And, you know, when they named it, uh, the, the, the stigma that, uh, that hung around the word Dictator hadn't really hit the world yet, uh, all that stuff that was going on over in Europe. Uh, and Studebaker billed the original Dictator in 1927 as a car that would dictate the standards in its price class. So, you know, they, it changed in 1938. They started calling it uh, the Commander in 1938 because of the rise of the di Dictators in Europe. So, um, it, so by 35, 36, Studebaker was doing okay. Uh, you know, all things considered, depression and everything, they were relatively healthy. healthy. 1937 uh, saw a new design on the Dictator, the front end. They kept the Art Deco. I really like that that look throughout the entire car and then, so they refined the front end a little bit and made a few other changes and the NB Center Collection has given us a replica of that car. Now this is an exact replica of the car in the NB Center so you know I hear that every now and then oh I saw the catalog or you know somebody had a car like this and there might be some differences. What we're getting with the NB Center Collection are replicas of the actual cars that sit in the collection in Allentown. So uh, we're going to take a look at it, but I'm going to show you something. I've had a few people uh, ask about this, and I found a way to get the sleeve off the box without too much trouble. You've got to have a few fingernails in here. Stand the box up on its side, grab it by the side, and give it just a little push at the same time. And because there's no pressure on the sleeve, with a little bit of wiggling, it comes right off. Okay, stand it up on the side, a little bit of wiggling, a little bit of pressure, comes right off. The, the packaging is very impressive. The model is fantastic. Um, I, I, I love the packaging. It's the best packaging in the business. It's secure. It's got the heavy plexiglass uh, cover to it. Uh, it's just an amazing set of packaging. And it, it, it's supposed to be reflective of the quality of the model that you see here. Uh, so you can see it, it's formidable. It's, it, the model is absolutely secure in the packaging. Uh, the plexiglass cover is very elegant, but it comes across easily enough. And you can remove the car from the base if you want to display it on your shelf. Personally, I feel it's kind of neat to, to have the whole case here. I know some people don't have room on it, uh, but there it is. And the casing is fantastic. Now, the model is looked it, it, it just looks fantastic. This cover, cover is a little bit different than the previous issue. Now this car, uh, this, this car was issued in uh, 2019, I believe. No, it was 2016 as a uh, BML release. Um, and they made some improvements to it. There wasn't a lot of trim on the car to begin with. Uh, so sometimes you got to look a little bit harder. 
Uh, but the color is totally different. Uh, it's a little bit uh, darker than the previous color. Uh, they have made improvements. There are lenses in the headlights. They're really well done. A little bit more detail work on the grill. Um, the the hubcaps are painted out. The word Studebaker is picked out. And they a really nice job on the wheels. I'll get you a close-up on the wheels and let you take a look at it. The, uh, uh, the rear bumper is, is uh, the bumper brackets are in black. Uh, you can see the detail on the trunk, the badging, uh, very minute, very close to what we're seeing with some of the resin uh, makers are doing with badging. It's beautifully done, beautifully rendered, and you really got to get in there close to take a look at it. The window surrounds are a bit more delicate. Now, Darren Mold has come up with a new way to do window surrounds. You can see that here on the vent wings. These are made out of very delicate, well-formed uh, wire, and to me, they look a lot more realistic than anything photo etch would ever do. Uh, they maintain the rear window, the Art Deco look to the rear, which uh, goes really nice in harmony with the front. The hood ornament uh, looks fantastic. The windshield wipers and everything, well replicated, very much scale. Some uh, improvements in the interior as well. It's a little bit harder to see, but I'll tell you something. If you're not looking inside your models as you get them, you're missing a real treat because the manufacturers are working really hard to give us realistic uh, interiors. So they've added a rear view mirror uh, right up there in the windshield heading. Um, there are extra handles for the window cranks and for the door handles and everything. The seat texture is well picked out. Um, they've made some significant improvements to the model. They're small details, but they really, to me, it really makes the model pop. Uh, so, you know, we had an issue price on this when it was first issued uh, back uh, as a BML, uh, right around uh, $170 or so. And this one is selling for uh, a little bit more. Uh, I think it's about $50 more. Uh, but between the extra packaging, the extra detail, the extra tension, the finish and everything, the nicer wheels and everything, I still think it's a good buy. Uh, and there's enough of a color difference that if you don't have one of these in your collection, uh, I think it's worth making a move on. They're not making very many of them. Uh, you know, people say, well, why did you do this? There could have been other models you could have made and everything. And so, you know, and Brooklyn, Brooklyn's got a lot of stuff in the works, okay? Uh, you know, when somebody comes up and says, hey, I want a super detailed version of the Dictator, they've already got the molds and everything, it's fairly easy for them to make. And they've given us something special in it that they've made the, the tangible improvements in the model. So, you know, there are only going to be a very few of these. I think most of them went to a private owner. Uh, so if you're interested in this model, you've got to move on it quickly. It's available on the website. Uh, you can order it. And uh, now you've taken a close look at it. And you see, uh, I think you've really got to sit them next to each other, the BML version and the NB Center version, to appreciate uh, how much better the new one looks. It's a valuable addition. Uh, it's top of the line. This is as good as it gets in white metal. So that's my take on the NB Center Collections 1937 Studebaker Dictator. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed the video, do me a favor. Would you hit the like button down there? I'd love to have you as a subscriber. Um, we've got a whole bunch of stuff coming. I've got several videos to show, show over the next few days or so. And I really appreciate you spending some time with me. Till we meet again, it's my take, John Kavakis. Have a good one.